Okay, what's an alternating series? Well, it's a series that has, well, alternating signs, positive, negative, positive, negative, or maybe it starts with a negative. Generally, they start with a positive, but that's not always the case. I want you to notice the structure of this. We're gonna let a sub n be greater than zero, and that, it, that means that the explicit term is positive. Then the alternating series is going to be, just look at that part, positive, but then we have negative one to the n, and when you have negative one to the first, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth, then the sixth, then you're gonna have a negative, then a positive, then a negative, then a positive, then a negative, then a positive. It's the same thing if you have a n plus one as an exponent. Your signs are going to be alternating, right? So they're gonna converge when these two conditions are met. So the alternating series will converge when I have met two conditions. Condition number one, this is the nth term test. That's what this really is, nth term test. But it's only for the a sub n, which is the positive aspect of it, not what I call, and this is not a textbook definition, but the toggle factor. It is a factor that toggles, switches my sign back and forth. So this is the nth term, nth term test for the positive explicit formula. Like if I took the absolute value of this and I had no more switching back and forth, that would be what I'm dealing with and I wanna make sure that it approaches zero as in approaches infinity, nth term test basically. And then this is a fancy way of saying the next term, that's the next term, is always less than or equal to the current term. In other words, the series is always getting smaller or, or is staying the same, which we can't consistently do if we're going to have something that converges. But there we go. These are my two conditions. So the alternating series test is basically going to be done on, you guessed it, alternating series. And how do you know a series is alternating? Well, look at the toggle factor. See that negative one with an exponent? It's going to switch your signs back and forth. Let's jump in. Okay, we're going to have this right here. We're going to write the first four terms and determine if the series converges or diverges. So let's do it. Let's do it in purple. I'm going to plug in a one. When I plug in a one, I have negative one to the one over the square root of one, which is one. So that's negative one. Okay. Ah, uh, let's, let's do that. I want, to, I want to just kind of pick this apart in a different way. If I square this, I'm going to have a positive, so positive 1 over the square root of 2. And then I'm going to have to the third, so negative 1 to the third, that'd be negative 1 over the square root of 3. And then positive 1 over the square root of 4, yeah, call it a 2. Call that a 1 if you want to, so dot, dot, dot. There we go. I'm going to just go a little bit further with this, and this is negative 1 plus 1 over the square root of 2 minus 1 over the square root of 3 plus one over, I'll put the square root on that one just for consistency of structure. Could have done that here, just didn't. And so that's what we have. So the question is, if I continue this pattern forever, will I have a number as a sum? Will I have a number as a sum or will it be approaching infinity? And we don't know. So let's find out. Because it's alternating, we can do the alternating series test. We'll do these two things. And here are the two things. First of all, nth term test. Oh, let's, let's switch to blue. The limit as n approaches infinity of. Okay, not the whole thing, just the positive aspect, which is in the denominator. And as n approaches infinity, we have an ever-increasing denominator, albeit slowly. So this does equal zero. We have met condition number one. I'd just like to put a check mark and be like, yay, celebrate. Okay. Now we're gonna to go to the next one and we're gonna say, well, the next term is always less than or equal to the current term. I need to clarify that a little bit. Um, the next term is always less than or equal to the current term, um, considering, con, consider, considering, which apparently is hard to spell, <laughs> considering the positive, explicit formula only. 
Okay, that's where we just throw away the toggling back and forth with the signs. And we will just say, okay, if I wanted the next term, just the positive aspect of it, I'm looking here actually, plug an n plus one in. So one over the square root of n plus one is that, it's quite the square root symbol. <laughs> I think it's kind of radical myself. <laughs> Is that consistently less than or equal to one over the square root of n? Well, bigger denominator makes for a smaller fraction. And so, yes, check. Therefore, final answer, switching colors again. It's fun. Because we have met these two conditions, n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n. Well, you're not using the negative, you're not using the positive aspect only. No, I'm writing my final answer. I'm gonna tell you that this Converges. Now, in a previous lesson, last lesson, we talked about conditional and absolute convergence. We're not going to go there in this lesson. I'm just introducing you to alternating series. Conditional and absolute convergence is going to be the next lesson where we talk about whether or not this will converge regardless of whether it's alternating or if it's consistently positive. That's what that's going to be. So when you're thinking back to, oh, conditional, abs conditional convergence based on the previous lesson, no, not this issue. 